Many of my patients are interested in changing their eye color, and I typically prescribe colored contacts for that purpose. But is there a way to change the eye color permanently? Today, we're going to investigate new eye color changing drops and balms. And the question is, do they work? Are they safe? All of that on today's eye school. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. Welcome to Eye School. I'm your host, Dr. D. The theme of Eye School is lifelong eye education, so I always invite you to let me know what you're learning and request videos about new topics. If you find this video informative, please consider hitting the thumbs up because it helps YouTube know that this video is helpful. All right, iSchool pupils, let's take a look at today's topic, color changing eye drops. So first of all, what are the current options to change your eye color? Well, we know that colored contact lenses are a doctor approved, very common way to change your eye color, and there are many options on the market. I myself prescribe Air Optics Aqua Colors, Daily Colors, and others are out there as well. There's certainly a plethora of online colored contact lens stores that we've talked about in the past as well. The second way to change your eye color is iris implant surgery. I do have a video planned on this topic, so I'm not going to go into that in depth on today's video. The third way of changing your eye color are actual eye color changing drops. And these drops are being marketed by many, many different companies. In researching this video, I found drops from a company called Wonder Drops, Eye Color Balm, that was promoted recently by Scott Disick, CrystalDrops.co, Light Eyes, Iris Illum. What's really interesting in researching this video is that many of these sellers seem to come and go. Most of them actually have their seller pages removed on Amazon and very poor reviews, including reviews that say that their balm or eye drops actually came expired and not just by a couple of months, expired by years. Also, in researching the companies, I noticed that many of the websites have copious grammatical errors throughout the site. If they're using the same verification and research process for the safety of their drops that they're using on their own marketing websites, that's not a good sign. So here are some of my concerns about the actual ingredients within these drops and balms. First of all, it can be very, very difficult to find the actual active ingredient within these different drops and balms. In some cases though, I have found that they're using N-acetylglucosamine, which is a skin lightener. As we've talked about on this channel before, many cosmetics, especially if something is marketed as a cosmetic, it's not undergone the stringent FDA requirements that are expected of prescription eye drops. In order for a prescription eye drop to hit the market, there are often three phases of FDA trials and you have to hit certain criteria of study subjects and prove that those drops are safe. However, it's super concerning to me that these are being marketed as cosmetics, that they're using a skin, um, a skin lightening ingredient in an eye drop with no safety studies and no safety data that I could find in the literature anywhere. The data on the website is also very misleading. So in one of the websites, crystaldrops.co, the very first image you see going onto the website is three female doctors in white coats. And I just take issue with the message that that's sending. It's almost like it's saying that that drop is doctor approved or that it's something you could get from your doctor when that's just not the case at all. And again, there's no verbiage anywhere on the website saying that doctors approve of these drops. However, I feel like showing doctors on the very front page first image is problematic. There was also a The Doctor Show clip that I wanted to show you and we'll insert a little clip right here. And on that clip, we have an ophthalmologist and other um, medical doctors and physicians talking about these drops and some of the problems they see. 
It's on the market, but the safety trials are yet to be done. It's because, Drew, this is not considered a medication. And so it doesn't have the same stringent things that you got to go through to prove safety. If, if this were on the market as a true medical product, you would have to prove safety. But this is not, this is not being it's, touted as yeah, a medical it, product, I, I, right? I understand it's being touted as a cosmetic. And so actually when you look at the websites, the comments are astounding because there are these people sort of egging each other on for prolonged use to keep at it and to get this sustained result. So just more and more damage. It's so I suspect I know, but buzz or bust? Bust. Also, as an eye doctor, I feel it's important to raise some very important questions. So these drops say that they work on the front surface or, you know, they can make it through the front surface of the eye and change the eye color. So that's impacting the melanin and the pigment within the iris of the eye. But who's to say that it won't make it further back into the eye? So what if this drop makes it to the, the retina itself? There is pigment in the back of the eye, and we know that in certain conditions like albinism, so um, people that have very little pigment in the back of their eyes, that actually is a problem for them. They don't um, have as great a visual acuity. There's other issues in albinism. And so I don't know that this will affect the back of the eye, but that concern for me is definitely there. And then you know I'm a dry eye specialist if you watch this channel, so you know I have to question how these drops might impact the ocular surface, the meibomian glands, dry eye patients. I know already that they're not FDA approved. They're not studied stringently in the way that prescription eye drops should be. And so I don't know what the ingredients are necessarily, but my concern would be that those ingredients could have an, a negative impact on the ocular surface environment, which would impact dry eye and create more dry eye, hypersensitivity reactions, allergies, and things like that. Taking a look here, I just wanna show you some Amazon reviews. You can see that most of these reviews are one star and really are not positive. These people are talking about expired balms and um, not having good results and even saying things like this is a scam. All right, in terms of research, there are no peer-reviewed studies that I was able to find. One of the sites does claim FDA approval, but I am unable in lots of searches to find that documentation anywhere from the FDA. In conclusion, I cannot endorse use of these medications. I honestly, in some cases, don't even understand how they're allowed to operate. Um, and definitely safety studies are needed. There are safer ways to change your eye color and the best one of those is to get fit in colored contact lenses, which is what I would recommend you do if you're interested in changing your eye color. That's it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Remember, learning is lifelong, so make sure to stay tuned in in the future by subscribing. I continually update my videos as my understanding evolves and I wouldn't want you to miss a thing. I'll see you next time.